So the next criteria you want to check out when you're looking at evaluating a joint is whether it'll slip or not. So what I've done is I've added under this joint separation spreadsheet to also look at joint slip. So what are we talking about with joint slip? So if you look at this figure to the right right here, you have an external load, tensile load acting on the joint, and then you have a shear load acting on the joint. Well, if you draw a free body diagram of this upper member, we can really begin to diagnose um, the forces that are holding it together. So that free body diagram is shown here to the right. As you can see, we have the preload force acting on the member and also the external load which is transferred between the bolt and the member. The percentage of that is going to be transferred to the member as we discussed in the previous video. And then you have a shear force acting on it and then you have your reaction force as a friction force and a normal force pushing up. So if you just use your sum of forces equal to zero, you can solve for your normal force, which is equal to your preload minus the percentage of the external load transferred to the joint member or trying to separate it apart. And then the force of friction is simply just going to be the coefficient of friction times the normal force. And as long as the force of friction is greater than your shear force acting on the member, the joint will not slip. So that's the criteria we need to evaluate. And if you remember, if the joint does slip, that means your bolt or your fastener is going to take the entire shear load, which is exactly what we don't want when we do our design. And so this spreadsheet, we calculated joint separation. And now we have a section for joint slip. So we calculate the normal force. This normal force is simply calculated with, with this equation to the left. As you can see, our inputs are going to be our preload and also our axial load acting on the joint member that we pull from our FEA program. And then the percentage of the load carried by the fastener. Um, once we do that, we find out that our normal force is equal to 48 pounds in this case. And then our force of friction is simply going to be our coefficient of friction times the normal force. So our coefficient of friction, I'm assuming 0.25. It's safe to assume between a value of 0.2 and 0.25 in most cases. And then we simply multiply that by the normal force. That gives us our force of friction. And then, in this case, we calculate our equivalent shear load. So in a lot of FEA programs, a lot of times you're going to get directional forces in the X, Y, and Z directions. So you're going to have to calculate an equivalent shear load. In this case, I just used Pythagorean Theorem, and our inputs are going to be two shear forces, shear component one and shear component two. And then the last step we do is we calculate a margin of safety, which is simply going to be our frictional force divided by a safety factor times our equivalent shear load minus one. And so as you can see here, our inputs are going to be our resultant shear force, our force of friction, and then a safety factor of 1.15 is what I used in this case. So as long as our values are positive, we're good. But as you can see in this case, it's suggesting our joint is going to slip. And that makes sense because our force due to friction is less than our resultant shear force. So what do we do to um, make our margin positive? What can we do to, to manipulate that? Well, we can change our torque. In this case, I got 4 inch pounds. I can change that to 6. And you can see we changed it to 6 in our margin of safety updated to a positive number. So in this case, um, this joint would be sufficient. But there's also another criteria we need to evaluate, which is going to be fastener fatigue. And that's going to be due to vibration loads. And we'll discuss that in the upcoming videos on and add to this sheet because joint slip, joint separation and fastener fatigue they're all kind of uh, you you kind of gotta uh, just play with it because they're all affected by the same variables and you need to ensure that all the margins are positive to make sure your joint is sound and um, will not fail so guys I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time
Adios.